الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد In the next portion of the surah, that is Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He explains to us the rulings of At-Talaq, what we call in English divorce. And this is something which makes Islam stand out from the other organized religions as they are called. Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brought a system, a conduct, and discipline which the Muslims, they carry out their lives according to, even in the smallest of matters and the most important of matters. And some of these issues which are very critical to the individual and the society in general, like at This is verse number 228. I will summarize first the rulings of talaq before going through the verses. Then whatever ad- uh, is needed to be added, we'll do that, inshallah. Islamically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instituted divorce talaq. It is something allowed in Islam. And the hadith which says, Abghadul halal ila Allah talaq. This is not a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which many people, even though they say that the most hated or most disliked permissible thing to Allah is the lack of divorce. This is not a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. A talaq is allowed in Islam with the right conditions, with the right time, in a specific way as we'll go through inshallah. Unlike other religions like Christianity predominantly, <laughs> you have to know in Christianity... There is no talaq, there is no divorce per se. Who knew that? Who knew that? Who knew that? Anybody knew that? Did you know that? That there is no divorce in Christianity? There is no divorce. You knew that? And if the woman is divorced, they say, you cannot marry her. Anybody else cannot marry her. And if you marry her, then you are in the same level as a fornicator. That's what the Bible says, not me. Thus making things tough for the people. Because sometimes the best solution is divorce. Sometimes the best solution is divorce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made talaq, divorce, in the hands of the man. You know, and I don't want any of those feminists Um, uh, screaming at me right now but men generally speaking are more thoughtful thoughtful with the meaning of not emotional not quick to judge by emotion compared to women if talaq was left for the woman see the brother smiling I didn't even finish my sentence he knows what I'm gonna say Huh? All of the married people, they're smiling. They're also not married masakin. They don't even know what we're talking about. Huh? <laughs> they don't know what, what page we're at. If talaq was left for the woman, all of us will be divorced by now. Huh? There will be a lineup, you know. Not of the sisters, of the brothers, you know. Sheikh, I got divorced today. You know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, I got divorced yesterday also. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> but, but that is the, the reality. The woman is very emotional and she becomes emotional she's rash you know again we're speaking generous so Allah made talaq in the hands of the men but also that does not mean again this from the beauty of Islam that the woman doesn't have a right to ask for talaq she has she has in Islam she has a right to ask for talaq Naam. so and talaq it is issued Either by writing 
or by statement, a statement which was intended to mean divorce. Either by writing or a statement. Either of those which is meant to be divorced, then that is divorce, it has happened. It doesn't have to be the actual word talaq or the actual word in English divorce. No, it doesn't have to be. You can use the kinaya, something which is like metaphorical, but you mean divorce, then that is divorce. If you in your heart you intended divorce, that's divorce. So if you say to your wife, me and you, we are done. And you meant divorce, she's divorced. If you say to your wife, go back to your father's home. And you meant divorce, that's divorce. You understand? It doesn't have to be the word, I divorce you. And like we said, it can be written or it can be verbal. It, uh, it stands in an Islamic court. And it comes back again to the intention of the man, like we said. Talaq of the Sakran, someone who's intoxicated. There's difference about it because there's uh, details. If it's someone who's intoxicated but he knows what he's doing, that talaq it passes. That divorce passes. But if it's someone who's intoxicated to the point that he doesn't know what he's saying, then that talaq, that divorce does not hold any weight. Just like, now this is the, 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 the crucial subject which always comes. Someone who's angry. Talaq of someone who's angry passes and who divorces if, when they're not angry, when they're happy? Who does that? But if it's the anger where some people when they, they become so angry they reach a state where you know, they lose sense of, their, of, their, of themselves. Then that person is like the drunk person. He doesn't know. When he's told you say that and you did that, he says, no, that was not me. That kind of a person, it doesn't hold. But any kind of anger, the talaq, it passes. And talaq Allah has given, that is three times. For one woman, it's three times. When you divorce the woman, and this will come also in the surah, there's the Islam brought a nice, very beautiful system of the idda. What is the idda? The idda is the waiting period. In English, they say that. Meaning you divorced your wife. Now she stays for three quru, as Allah will mention, three quru, which are three monthly cycles. She is technically still your wife. She is still your wife. And in these three periods which she gets, you can take her back. You say, I take you back, and now she's your wife again, completely. But that talaq already counts. It already counts. And if you don't take her back within those three periods she gets, if you don't take her back, once she finishes her third period, then she is ajnabiya to you. She is a strange woman. You have no connection to her. She cannot stay in the same house with you. And if you want to remarry her, now you are doing a whole new nikah. You have to propose again to her and to have a new mahar, a new dowry, and her father has to give the idhan, and there has to be two witnesses, it's a whole new contract. Now you can get married to her. But even then, because she's the same woman you, you were married before, how many divorces are left with her? Two. Two divorces are left with her. If you do it again, and then again, after the third divorce, now there's no way for you to, met, to, to marry her again unless she gets married to another man and then he divorces her and then she stays for the waiting period, then you can remarry her again. This is the system of talaq in Islam. And there is the khula'. The khula' is what you call in English, um, what is the word? You can say separation starts with an A. Annulment. Close to annulment. Very good. Khula' is when the woman asks for divorce for a reason which she sees is befitting. 
So she says to her husband, you know, you need to divorce me. I'm asking for a khula. When the husband agrees, there's conditions for khula. What are the conditions? What about the mahr? She has to pay back the dowry she was given. When she asks for divorce, then the husband agrees. Then he says, okay. And the condition is, this will come. She gives back the mahr she was given, the dowry she was given. And the husband says, okay, we do the khula. They do the annulment. And in the khula, the woman stays for the idda also, but only for one month. Meaning one period, one menstrual cycle. Only one. Not three like the actual talaq. And once that ends, he cannot take her back. He cannot take her back. They have to remarry. Because khula is annulment. Annulment. Or if the husband decides, you know, I, I don't want the dowry back also. Is that okay? That is fine. That is his right he's giving up. That is his right he's giving up. So this is the system of talaq, and yani briefly, briefly. And in terms of taking back the wife before the period ends, there has to be two witnesses. In divorce, you don't have to have witnesses. In talaq, you don't have to have witnesses. But taking her back, there has to be two people who witness that. They don't have to be there physically as long as they hear you saying that. You understand? In taking back a ruj'a, there has to be two witnesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is verse number 228. Wal mutallaqat and the mutallaqat, the women who have been divorced, yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna, they should wait for themselves, they should count. As Allah says in Surah Al-Talaq, to show how important this subject is, there's a whole surah called Surah Al-Talaq. Wa ahsul idda, Allah says, count, count, make sure you count the idda. Thalatha taquru, they wait three quru. Quru, jam'u qar. What is the meaning of quru? Huh? Is it months? She waits three months? Or is it quru, three menstrual cycles? The scholars, they differ. Those of you who love to use that, there's difference of opinion. But we said not every difference of opinion is valid because there's a very clear, authentic narration from Aisha radiallahu anha where she said, quru qar, it is the hayubdo. It is the menstrual cycle. So once you divorce your wife, she waits until she gets her first period. Then she becomes clean. Then she gets her second period. Once she gets her third period, uh, and it ends, then she's no longer your wife. You cannot take her back. You have to do a new nikah. So you may ask, what's the difference? The difference is the period does not necessarily go by month. Some women get it every 21 days or every 20 days. Some of them less than that. So everybody is different. But if a woman does not get the period naturally, then she waits for three months, three Islamic months. From the debt, uh, the talaq was issued. Why? What is the wisdom behind this period, the idda? Huh? Allah says, Allah Maybe Allah will bring something after that. Maybe you will regret and you say, No, I shouldn't divorce this woman, it's good for me. Maybe she will collect, correct her mistake, sorry. Maybe she'll correct her mistake. And you say, You know what? There's no need for separation. Maybe you make up, you know, and you said, okay, things will be good from today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it like that. This is the great wisdom. And three menstrual periods, which could be equal to three months, like we said, is a lot of time. 
is a lot of time to make up and reconcile and peace and you know right or wrong what, what do you think three months that's a long time not just three months remember the woman during the idda this time she's in this period she's like we said technically still your wife she has she has to stay in your home it's a must if she leaves the house she is sinning or if you tell her to leave the house you are sinning she has to stay in the house of marriage she has to that is the wisdom behind why allah put the idda so that she lives with you she still shares the same house with you you see her every day just like before the only thing is we cannot have intercourse now imagine three months you're still in the same house together if you don't decide to make peace within three months then that marriage deserves that divorce trust me on that if you cannot make up in those three months maybe the divorce is good for you and you have to know sometimes divorce is better i say this and i'm going to say it again like i said yesterday some people look at me strangely when i say these statements but i'm speaking through experience i'm telling you sometimes divorce is the best solution in a marriage sometimes so if these people cannot make up in three months then Allah says, وَإِن يَتَفَرَّقَا And if they split, uh, يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلًّا مِنْ سَعَتِهِ Allah is going to provide each of them from His wealth. Don't think divorce is the end of the world. No. If they decide we can't do this, you know, Allah will provide each of them from His bounties if they fear Allah. If you happen to have intercourse with your wife during the idda, then that is the silent taking back. If you have intercourse, then you have taken her back practically. You understand? During the idda, if you actually have intercourse with the wife, then you have practically taken her back. And it is not allowed. Something important we have to mention. Talaq is of two types. Talaq al-Sunni or Talaq al-Sahih or Talaq al-Bid'i. That's the Talaq which is correct and the Talaq which is an innovation. Bid'i which is the wrong Talaq. The wrong Talaq is which one? To divorce the wife when she is in her period. It's not allowed to divorce the woman when she is on her period. Or fi tuhrin qad jama'aha fihi. Or during that time of cleanliness when you actually had intercourse with her. You understand? You had intercourse with your wife yesterday or today. You cannot divorce her. You cannot divorce her. In that time period she was clean and you had intercourse with her. We have to wait until she gets her period. She becomes clean. And before you have intercourse with her, then you divorce her. You do not divorce the woman in the time period you had intercourse with her or when she's actually having her period that talaq is haram you are sinful when you do that but does it count yes it counts but you have to keep her until she becomes clean she takes you sorry she, she she gets her period and then she becomes clean and then without touching her you divorce her you understand can you divorce the woman if she's pregnant? Huh? Who knows? Yes, there's nothing which says you cannot divorce the woman when she's pregnant. But the idda for her is when? An yadu'ana hamlahunna. There the waiting period is until she, gi she gives birth because you cannot get married to a woman who is pregnant from another man so for her she cannot get married for anybody so her idda ends when when she gives birth what if that is tomorrow call us that's tomorrow one of the wisdoms behind the idda other than to make time for reconciliation one of the wisdom is what to see if the woman is pregnant or not 
this happened during the time of the Sahaba with the great Sahabi Abdurrahman bin Auf or Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, one of them. His wife complained, 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 said, you have to divorce me. He said, okay, divorce you. Next day she gave birth. And Sa'ad or Abdurrahman came to the Prophet Sam to complain. Say, Ya Rasulullah, she played a game on me. Inna kaydahunna azim, Allah says. The plots and the plans of the women. Allahu Akbar. You think you're a trickster? Wait until you get married. Then you know that there's people who can plan. Huh? She has all the time, she's sitting at home just planning. Just planning for you. Maybe she, is a, she even has a, a scratch pad, you know. She's making notes. Maybe not, maybe I'm exaggerating. But that's how the woman is. That's how the woman is. The woman loves to plan. Good. Don't ask. She loves to. A woman always has plans, you know. Always. Men, we don't think like that mostly. You know, men who live by the moment and, you know, just you have your normal things. The woman, she has plans. She has plans. You know, after Walmart, we're going to go to Chuck E. Cheese. After Chuck E. Cheese, we're going to go for the masjid. After the masjid, we're going to visit my aunt. And then after my aunt, we're going to, I don't know, lecture. And then after, and you're like, I didn't get this briefing, you know. <laughs> and Yahweh, woe to you that you cancel those plans then. Huh? That is the day you get divorced. Remember I said you'll get divorced? That's the day. <laughs> but subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from the, for the man, the woman, and for the woman, the man. Remember we read the verse, Hunna libasun lakum, wa antum libasun lahun. They are your protectors, you are their protectors. But everybody's different, you know, everybody's different. And that's the beauty of a marriage. The beauty of a marriage is you learn to compromise. You accept someone, like we all said here the other day, and <laughs> some brothers maybe they got offended. You cannot find a perfect spouse. So find someone who, we said has what? Has more good than bad. That's it. And the most important thing is the deen and the akhlaq, the manners. Those are the two most important things. So Allah says, وَالْمُتَلَّقَاتُ تَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ So those women who are divorced, they wait for themselves three menstrual periods. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَهُنَّ And it is not allowed for them. أَنْ يَكْتُمْنَ To hide. مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ What Allah has created. فِي أَرْحَامِهِنَّ in their wombs. In kunna yu'minna billahi wal yawm al akhir If they are truly women who believe in Allah in the last day. Meaning if she discovers she is pregnant, she has to inform the husband. It's not allowed to hide that. It's not allowed. Just because you are fighting, just because they divorced, it's not allowed to hide his child from him. If you truly believe in Allah in the last day. Allah says, وَبُعُولَتُهُنَّ And their husbands. Ba'al is a husband. And it's a word which is used a lot in the Quran. Like who, who used that word? Who used that word? No, think. Think. That's a question for him. Who used that word? Wa ba'ali shaykha. And my husband is an old man. Him, him. I pointed to him. Ibrahim's wife, Hajar, alayhi salam. When she was given the news, she'll give birth. She said, how? I'm old. This husband of mine, Ba'ali. Ba'al is one. Bu'ul is a plural. So Allah says, And their husbands, the women's husbands, أَحَقُّ بِرَدِّهِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ إِنْ أَرَادُوا إِسْلَاحًا they have the most right to reconcile after the divorce if they want islah, if both of them agree to make things good. Meaning for her to return to her previous husband, he has more right than any other man. Allah says, 
ولهن and for them the women مثل الذي عليهن equally for what is on them بالمعروف according to معروف Allah says ولهن and they deserve meaning they deserve the rights مثل الذي عليهن just like the rights which they have to fulfill that is one of the greatest ayahs of the Quran in terms of showing how you have to deal with your wife you don't deal with your wife as subordinate. She's not there to servant for you. No. She has rights just like she has rights to fulfill. مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوف Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it beautiful. Allah said what? بِالْمَعْرُوف What is ma'ruf? What is ma'ruf? Ma'ruf, it comes from goodness. From Urf. Allah says, Bil Ma'aruf. The rights are based on Ma'aruf. What is Ma'aruf? So, what is the rights the woman has on the man and the woman has on the woman? It is based on Urf. Remember, we talked about Urf? The custom of the land. You understand? Your wife here, she deserves an apartment, or at least, at least, like we say, a basement apartment, which is at least $600, I would suppose, right? And groceries at least $200, right? And food and shelter here and a phone bill and whatever. It's $1,000 minimum. I'm just making rough estimation. Right or wrong? That's her right. She deserves that. Bil ma'roof, Allah says, according to the custom. But if you have your wife somewhere in, uh, which part of China are you from? From Beijing. Maybe $500 is enough. Right? No? It's actually more expensive? Yeah, Beijing, yes, that's a big city, it's true. Maybe you need $2,000 in Beijing, just for those basics. For those basics, a small apartment, basic groceries, bills here and there. So $1,000 is ma'roof here in Toronto. $2,000 is ma'roof in Beijing. Maybe you go to one of the countries we are from. Where are you from, Akhi? Ivory Coast, Abidjan. Very good. He's from Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. Ivory Coast. I'm sure $600, you're living like a king a month. Right or wrong? $600 is ma'roof in Abidjan or anywhere else. You understand the point? I'm just giving you examples. Ma'roof is according to the land you live in. So they have rights just like you have rights over them according to the way which they deserve of the land. بالمعروف. To show that women, they have rights over us also. And we have to be good to our, we, to our wives. You have to be good to your wife. Because Allah says, they have rights over you. And Allah says, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بالمعروف. Live with them in a good way. Live with them in a good way. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during his farewell speech, he said, اِسْتَوْصُ بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا I give you advice that you treat your wives good. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laysa bi They are not the best of you. They are not the best of you. They are not the best of you. They asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who hit their wives. You have to treat her well if you want her to treat you well. Allah then says, Walil rijali alayhinna daraja. And the men, they have a degree over them. They have a degree over them. Wallahu azizun hakim. And Allah is al aziz. He is the most wise, the most strong. Allah is the one who has a degree over everyone. And Allah is al hakim, the most wise. Allah says, At talaqu marratan, divorce is two times. Fa imsakum bi ma'roof, so you keep her in a good way. Or you let her go with goodness. You let her go with goodness. That is what you always say, Yahwani. Even if you have to separate or divorce, it doesn't have to be a war. It doesn't have to be. Some of us even go worse than that. It's a war of the tribes. Why are they fighting? Because people divorce. No, who told you it has to be that? Allah says, you divorce her first time. You divorce her second time. 
keep her in a good way or tasrihum bi ihsan or let her go in a nice way with ihsan with goodness wala yahillu lakum and it is not allowed for you an ta'khudhu mimma ataytumuhunna shay'an that you take from them whatever you have given them some men are like that because they divorce you give me back everything i gave you no it's haram islamically wala yahillu lakum it's not halal for you an ta'khudhu to take anything mimma ataytumuhunna which you gave them shay'an nakira fi siyak an-nahy that is something which is general generic sorry it is not um definite in the context of what of a prohibition in usul of fiqh we say that generalizes everything it's not allowed for you to even take one cent back if you give her you gave her all those gifts you used to love her you used to take her to what is that store which sells diamonds what is it called There's that one which is famous, you know. No, you can't go to De Beers. Come on, man. De Beers is the company which makes the diamonds. And I'm talking about the store. People's diamonds, that's what they call it. You know, you go to with her to every month. When you get your paycheck, you take her to People's Diamonds. You pass by the bay after that. You know, when you... <laughs> you, leave, you leave by the... Um, what do they call that store where they sell the... The body shop. You know, and <laughs> you know, you're spoiling your wife. Alhamdulillah, that's good. But when you decide to divorce, don't write a list. And Subhanallah, that's the system of the of the tawaqit, the systems we live to the systems of kufr. When they divorce, he writes a list. I want this back and that back and that back and that back. No, you give as a gift. It's hers. It's not allowed to take back. Not just your wife. It's not allowed to take back any gift you back you give that you know that it's not allowed to take a gift back it's one of the major sins one of the despicable sins the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described it like what he said al ahid al aid sorry al aid min hibatihi the one who takes back his gift is like what kal kalbi is like the dog yaudu ala qayhi who takes back his vomit a dog who vomited and then eats the vomit that's like someone who gave a gift and then takes it back it's not allowed unless unless if you know that person is going to use it in haram right now you know that then you can take it back if you know for sure otherwise you're not allowed to do that and the scholar said there's another exception that is the father the father can take back from the son like in general he's not allowed to to take back the gift So even your wife just because you divorce divorce in good it's not allowed it's not halal to take back anything illa there's an exception though illa except what an yakhafa that the two of them they fear alla yuqima hudud allah that they cannot fear allah in their marriage so the woman asks for a khul'a this is about khul'a then that is the only way the husband can take back what the dowry only and not the other gifts if they fear you know what this marriage is not going to work and this is what happened with who huh zainab zainab radiyallahu anha not zainab afwan uh, what's her name the wife of the wife of um, thabit ibn qais she came and said ya rasulullah thabit I don't accuse him in term, in terms of his religion is the best man. But I fear kufr meaning I fear to be ungrateful to him. Because he wasn't the most handsome a uh, 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 brother. He wasn't the most handsome man. So the woman she said I fear you know that I won't treat him good because I'm not attracted to him. And the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said Ataruddin hadiqata are you going to return back the garden he gave us dowry and she said yes and that was the khul'a this was about it that is the khul'a that shows you again in Islam how a woman has the right to ask for an annulment of the marriage for any valid reason but the women who ask for divorce with no valid reason they have been warned a great warning 
The Prophet sallam, he said, the woman who asks for divorce with no valid reason, she will never smell the scent of Jannah. So it is not allowed to take back anything except the dowry in terms of the, in the scenario of a khula. Uh, for in, and that tells you, Juan, you see how that ayah ends? Sorry, how that portion ends? Allah yuqima hudud Allah. That shows you what divorce is about in Islam. You only break the marriage if you fear that you will not be able to observe Allah's commands in this marriage. You don't break the marriage for trivial things. Trivial things. It shows you that marriage is about what? We don't we fear that we cannot please Allah again anymore. If we are together, then let's break this marriage. This marriage is affecting my Islam. This marriage is not good. So now about this marriage, oh this woman she talks a lot. That's her job. And if she doesn't talk to you, who does she want to do? You, who do you want she to she talk to? Then she'll be like one of those women she's on the phone 24-7, right? Gossip folk. Huh? Who's to blame? You. You are the husband. She, she's expecting that when you come back. Let me give you a reason. I hope I can turn the mic off for this, but I can give you some tips. Let her talk, man. You know? Let's listen. What are you losing by listening? I know some of your wives are, are listening also right now. So <laughs> next time she's talking to you, she said, you are playing the sheikh's advice, right? You're just listening. Are you listening? What did I say? <laughs> Look, <laughs> see the married brothers, they love this. This is what they get asked exactly. Were you listening? Yeah, 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 yeah. What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> and then you're starting to think, Allahu Akbar. What did she say? And you remember the words from five minutes ago, you know? Oh, you said we'll go to shoppers today. No, I, I said after that, I said this and that. And I'm like, wow, she said all that? But trust me on this, Ikhwani, my point is, today is very sad people divorce for trivial things. <coughs> there are reasons for divorce, yes. That's the point we made. Islam are, uh, allows that, but not trivial things, you know, things which are small. There has to be fights in a marriage, like we said. We are all humans. We don't get along 24-7. never happens, you know. But you have to be, that is why Allah says you are the man, that is why divorce is in your hand. You are supposed to be the one who's more wise. You are supposed to be the one who takes his time to make decisions. If you become rash also, rash, R-A-S-H, then there'll be no marriage. If you have no patience, there'll be no marriage. Trust me on that. So the reason is if you fear that you won't observe Allah's commands. Allah says, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ So if you fear that you won't observe Allah's boundaries, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ Then there's no sin on them, the husband and the wife, in what she ransomed herself for. Meaning, she gave back the dowry for the divorce, for the khula. There's no problem. Allah says, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ Those are the boundaries of Allah. فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا Do not transgress those boundaries. وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ Then he warns Allah. Whoever passes Allah's boundaries, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Those ones هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ They are the oppressors. فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا So if he divorces her, meaning after what? After the second time, or no, the third time. فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا after he divorces her the two times, the previous ayah, now the third time, فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ Now she's no longer halal for him. مِنْ بَعْدُ After that, حَتَّى Until تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ Until she gets married to a man other than him. فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا So if that man now divorces her, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا Now there's no sin on them. أَنْ يَتَرَاجَعَا If the Come to, if they come together with the previous husband. In dhanna, only on one condition, subhanallah. In dhanna, if they think, both of them, an yuqima hudud Allah, that they are going to establish Allah's boundaries. Allahu Akbar. Look how Allah says. They, sh they can come back and marry each other. If they think, they can establish Allah's commands. That is the point behind marriage, I said this so, so many times here. 
Find someone who's going to make you better in your deen. Find someone who's going to keep you in Allah's boundaries. Find someone who wants to go to Jannah with you, not someone who doesn't care. That is the most important point. So if she's divorced the third time, you cannot take her back. And by the way, after you divorce her the third time, third divorce, there's no idda in the house. She has to leave. The third divorce. We said if you divorce your wife first time, she stays with you in the house for three menstrual cycles, okay? And you can take her back in that period. Second divorce happens. Same thing. But when the third divorce happens, she doesn't stay with you in the house. Because why? Because you cannot take her back now. She's no longer your wife technically. All she does is what? She observes her, her idda in her parents' house, her brother's house, wherever it is. And also after the third divorce, you don't have to spend on her. You don't have to spend on her anything. If there's kids, you spend on the kids. But her, no. Because now, third divorce is the end. And you cannot remarry her even if the idda ends. You cannot. Until when? Until she gets married to another man and they have intercourse and then he divorces her and then she stays for the idda. Now, if she wants to remarry that person, she can get remarried with a new contract. But there's some people, they have something they call tahleel. Tahleel is one of the major sins in Islam. What is tahleel? As you can tell from the word, it is from the word halal. They make permissible. Meaning, he divorced his wife three times. Now he regrets. So he does that. He, he, those people who play tricks with Allah, those are the worst people. Those are the worst people, those who play tricks with Allah. Those who are sinning, Allah, when they repent, Allah loves them. Not those who play games with Allah. So he divorced his wife three times. Now he wants to take her back. She wants to go back. So he sets up with his friend. Okay, you'll marry her and then divorce her so I can marry her again. The Prophet sallallahu said, Allah has cast the one who does that and the one who gets it done for him. Allah has cast them. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu said, she is not halal for you until that other person who marries her has to have intercourse with her, not just marriage. Not just marriage. She, he, they have to have intercourse. Then she sits for the idda. Allah says, وَتِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ And those are the boundaries of Allah. يُبَيِّنُهَا He clarifies for he clarifies them. لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ To people who know. To people who know. The next verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Iqra, what is the next verse? Read. وَإِذَا فَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ And when you divorce your wives, your women, فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ And they reach the time, uh, فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ Hold them, meaning stay with them in the marriage in, on, on good customary ways. أَوْ سَرِّحُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ Or let them, go, let them go in a good way. See, this is being repeated now another time to show the importance of it. You get married in happiness. Yes, you might not divorce in happiness, but also divorce in a good way. And do not hold them to harm them and to pass the limits. And do not hold them to harm them and to pass the limits. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ And whoever does that, فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَ He has oppressed himself. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزْوَى Do not take the verses of Allah for playing in jest. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ And remember the favors of Allah on you. See, we read almost a hundred verses. Allah mentioned the favors of, of His to who? Banu Israel, now Allah says to us, and you, remember the favors of Allah on you. وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And from the greatest favors, Allah revealed for you the book and the hikmah. We said the hikmah means what? The sunnah. 
يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ Allah, he admonishes you through the book and the sunnah. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ You should fear Allah. وَعْلَمُوا And you should know أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْنْ عَلِيمٌ That Allah, he knows everything. This portion of the verse, فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ سَرِّحُوهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ وَلَا تُمْسِكُوهُنَّ ذِرَارًا لِتَعْتَدُوا This was revealed because they used to have a term, sorry, they used to have a, a custom in Jahiliyyah before Islam. And that is why one of the reasons Allah brought three talaq in Islam. What they would do just to harm the woman, the person would say, I divorce you. So now she stays for the idda. Before the idda ends, he would say, I take you back. Once he takes her back, he'll say, I divorce you. She stays for idda and says, I take you back. Then I divorce you like that in perpetuity. You know, perpetually he'll do that just to harm the woman. So she's not married to him and she won't get married to someone else. Allah said, وَلَا تُمْسِكُهُنَّ ضِرَارًا لِتَعْتَدُوا And that is one of the reasons Allah put three divorces for the Muslims. Do not hold them to harm them. If you don't want to live in goodness with her, let her go. Let her go. If she's good, trust me on this, she'll find a husband better than you. If you think she's bad and you're good, you'll get a wife better than her. Allah knows who's good, who's bad. The point is you have to act good and you, the wife, you have to act good. That's it. Allah says, do not take the verses of Allah for jest and mockery. It is not allowed, Ikhwani, to make fun of anything of the religion. And it is sad these days, there's people, they made this their their, their, their forte, you know, they made it as their profession, in fact. They joke about the religion. Joking about the religion is kufr in Islam. Kufr, akbar, major kufr, you're out of Islam. Making fun of Allah's verses, making fun of Allah's commands, that is kufr, akbar. Wala in sa'altahum la yaqulunna inna ma kunna nakhud wa nal'ab in surat al-bara, surat al-tawbah. When you ask them, they used to make fun. They'll say, no, we're just playing and joking. Allah says, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِ وَرَسُولِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَعْزِئُونَ You are making fun of Allah and His verses and His messenger. لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا Don't make excuses now. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ You have disbelieved after your belief. After your belief. We joke about everything except the religion. Except the religion. That is the red line you don't cross. Allah says you should fear Allah and remember Allah's favors, subhanAllah. Allah says remember Allah's favors. This is a command, ikhwani. Do we do this? Do we sit and remember Allah's favors on us? Remember Allah's favors on you. And the greatest favors, al-kitab al-hikmah. He brought for you the book and the sunnah to admonish you and to guide your life. How beautiful it is that we have these systems. There's people today who live like animals randomly. They don't know what they do. What taqullah should fear Allah. Wa'alamu and know that Allah, He knows everything. Wa'idha tallaqtumun nisa'a. Allah says again, and when you divorce the women, فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ And they finish their, their time, their idda. فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ Do not stop them. Al-adul is to stop them. Do not stop them from doing what? أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ To remarry their ex-husbands if both of them they agree upon what is good. The woman was divorced. She finished her idda. But then the ex-husband and her they agreed, you know what, maybe we should remarry. We're going to do this better now. Allah says, you, Allah is talking to the awliya of the woman, the father of the girl or the brother of the girl. You, it's not allowed for you to stop that. Just because of what happened. Allah says, ذَلِكَ This command, you wa'athu bihi, Allah admonishes, مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whoever of you believes in Allah in the last day. If you believe in Allah in the last day, Allah says it's not allowed for you to do that. In fact, ذَلِكُمْ that أَزْكَى لَكُمْ وَأَطْهَرُ 
it is purer for you. It is better for all of you that she remarries her ex-husband. That is purer for all of you. For them too, for the families, for the children, if there's children. Azkalakum wa athar. Wallahu ya'lamu and Allah knows wa antum la ta'lamun. You know not. This verse was revealed because of the Sahabi. Uh, what is the name of the Sahabi? Who knows the name of the Sahabi? Huh? Zaid? No. Ma'aqil ibn Yasar. Ma'aqil ibn Yasar. Ma'aqil's sister was married to another Sahabi and then they divorced. And then they didn't divorce in the, in the best way. So when he came back to, to propose to her now, because the idda ended, for them to remarry, Ma'aqil said, no, I'll never get you married to her after the first time. While the two of them, they were okay with it. Allah revealed this verse. When you divorce the women, and they agree, the two of them, and they finish their period, the two of them want to remarry. It's not, فَلَا تَعْذُلُوهُنَّ it's not allowed for you to stop them. And yankihna zwajahunna to remarry their ex-husbands. It's not allowed. That is better. Allah says that is better. This shows you again though how Islam builds a society. And that yes, divorce could occur, but it should not be the end of the world. I'm saying this again because the some of you are old. You have children, maybe they're ready to get married. Oh, you will be there one day. If your son or your daughter happen to get divorced or yourself, it should not be the end of the world. It should not be a reason for enmity. No. So this verse was revealed and Ma'akali said, okay, I agree to what Allah says. Allah says now, after the divorce, you know, maybe there's children. Maybe there's children. Now we go into the rules of breastfeeding, suckling. Allah says, وَالْوَالِدَاتُ And the mothers, يُرْضِعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ They should breastfeed their children. حَوْلَيْنِ Two years. كَامِلَيْنِ Two complete years. Allah says, the mothers, they should breastfeed their children for two complete years is this a command that everyone has to do that the answer is no but this is a command of another way that there's no breastfeeding after two years Allah says the mother should breastfeed their children two complete years meaning after that there's no more breastfeeding but today you know, the, the doctors, after their so much research and survey, uh, they, it has been proven, like, with the, like all of you, I'm sure you know, that the, the great, great importance uh, of breastfeeding. Extreme importance, in fact. Especially for the first six months. The child should not be given any other food other than the mother's milk. Don't be deceived by people who don't have good intentions. Giving your child a bunch of chemicals mixed up. And they've proven how the, the child who gets breastfeed becomes smarter and more attached and loving to the mother. It's very, very important. After six months, you know, the baby is growing now. You can give him here and there, you know, some chicken sogar maybe if you want. <laughs> Make sure you cut it though. You know, my point is give him some food, you know, basic food. But don't stop the breastfeeding. If the woman can do two years complete, well, like, that is best. Or at least a year and a half. That is best. Allah says to show that this is not a must. Why we say this is not a must? It's not a command. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُتِمَّ الرَّبَاعَ For the one who wants to complete the time of uh, breastfeeding. To show that this is the time of breastfeeding. If you want to complete the complete time, it is حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ Two years. 
wa ala al-mawlud lahu and as for the father what is your duty what is your duty the woman's duty is to breastfeed and to take care of the child rizquhunna is to provide for them your wives food wa kiswatuhunna and to provide for them clothes bil ma'ruf you see that allah says what bil ma'ruf you feed your wife and you clothe her bil ma'ruf he said bil ma'ruf means what according to the custom according to the custom in a good way la tukallafu nafsun illa wus'aha no soul shall be burdened more than it can do you can only provide this that you can, can provide you understand allah made things easy la tubarra walidatun bi waladiha the 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 mother should not be harmed according to uh, in regards to her child wala mauludun lahu bi waladi no the father in regards to the child fa in arada fi salan wa ala al warith mithlu dhalika afwan and for the warith same likewise for that they are not supposed to be harmed in regards to the child wa ala al warith mithlu dhalik and the warith the inheritor also should not harm the woman or the husband because of the child you know when they split so they ch- they take the child away that's not allowed it's not allowed to use the child as a token of harm or you do the, we divorce or, or you won't see your child no no that's not the islamic way fain arada fi salan and so if the two of them the husband and the wife they agree to separate an taradim minhuma with agreeable terms they agreed you know let's separate this cannot work anymore fala junaha alayhima then there's no sin on them to do what ha fain arada fi salan an taradim minhuma wa tashawurin so if they want they agree to divorce to separate sorry after the both of them agree and they have consultation between each other fala junaha alayhima there's no problem on them see that's another inf- affirmation if the two of them agree you know this cannot work let's separate and they agree what the shower and then they agree about the child custody alhamdulillah islamically though child custody goes to the wo- wife to a woman the mother until the child reaches the age of 7 uh, and unless the woman r- gets married to another man then the father can claim the child but otherwise the child remains with the wa- with the mother allah says wa in aradtum and if you want an tastardi'u auladakum to give your children to other women to breastfeed them and this is a custom many of us from the countries you come from it's a normal custom the child is given to another woman to breastfeed especially a good woman you know a woman wh- whatever woman breastfeeds a, a, a child is going to have a positive or negative impact on that child so they used to give the children to good women to breastfeed them when i say good women in terms of their deen and if you want to give your children to women to breastfeed them fala junaha alaykum there's no problem in that idha sallamtum ma ataytum bil ma'ruf and if you agree some of them used to do that for a price they would charge there's nothing wrong allah says if you give what you agreed about wattaqullaha allah says you should fear allah wa alamu and you should know anna allah that allah bima ta'maluna basir allah sees whatever you're doing the last verse allah says fear allah and know that allah knows everything this verse allah says fear allah and allah sees everything Allah sees everything. Walladhina yutawaffawna now Allah speaks about the the widow, uh, the widow, the woman whose husband passes away. Walladhina yutawaffawna minkum and those of you who pass away, wa yadharuna azwajan and they leave behind wives, 
yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna those women they should stay in their waiting period for how long three menstrual cycles no that's for divorce for this one arba'ata ashhurin wa ashra four months and 10 days four months and 10 days that's the waiting period for the woman whose husband passed away from the day he passed away she stays for four months, four Islamic months, and ten days. After that, she can get married to another man. فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ So when they finish their waiting period, four months and ten days, فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ There's no problem on you. فِيمَا فَعَلْنَا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فِيمَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ What they do for themselves in what is good. As long as they're not sinning. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ and surely Allah, He knows everything you do. Subhanallah. Allah has news of everything you do. Allah then mentions about this. The, hu the wife whose husband passed away. When the idda ends, there's no problem for the woman uh, to look for another husband. She finished her idda. She can get remarried. This is one of the customs also some of us we have. That a woman, if her husband passed away, then that's it. She doesn't get remarried. No. Who said that? Who said that? But Allah, He put some commands about that. Listen to this. Allah says, وَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ And there's no problem for you. فِيمَا In what you do what? عَرَّدْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ خِطْبَةِ النِّسَاء أَوْ أَكْنَنْتُمْ فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ There's no problem for you in what you do of the ta'reed. In what you do of the ta'arid or in the proposal of those women or what you hide in your soul. Meaning you know there's a sister whose husband passed away and she's about to finish her idda. She's still in her idda. There's nothing wrong with ta'arid. Ta'arid, I don't know in English if they have a word for that. It is when you say something but it's not very direct. Like this example, as Imam Likathir, he says here, for you to say, you know, I want to get married. Instead of saying to that woman, you know, I'm proposing to you, I want to get married to you. You say, you know, I'm looking to get married. That is ta'arid. You understand? That is ta'arid. Allah says that way, there's nothing wrong. Or what you hide in yourselves. You know that there's a sister, her husband passed away, and you say, She's a good woman. I should get married to her. And this is what brought the society, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, and the Tba'u Tabi'een lived in, up. A good woman was never left to be single. That was a real man. Real man. And they didn't fear. They didn't fear. That's why they got married to the second, the third, and the fourth. It wasn't for desires. She's a good woman. Right away, people want to get married to her. Right away. But Allah says, what you do with the ta'rid or what you hide. Alim Allah, Allah knows, annakum satadhkurunahunna, that you will mention them. You will mention them. Because you want to get married to them. Walakin, but you should not do what? لا تواعدوهن سرا You should not agree with them secretly. It's not allowed. As long as she didn't finish. We're talking about she didn't finish her idda. She is still in those four months and ten days. You cannot propose to a woman in that time. You understand? You cannot promise her I'll marry you and agree to that in that period. No, that's not allowed. That's not allowed. إلا أن تقول قولا معروف Except to say good words. Like the ta'rid. But it's not allowed to propose to a woman who's in the waiting period. وَلَا تَعْزِمُ عُقْدَةَ النِّكَاحِ And do not, do not have uh, the resolution of doing the contract of nikah حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ الْكِتَابُ أَجَلَ Until the end of the period. Until the end of the period. The four months and ten days. وَعْلَمُوا And you should know أَنَّ اللَّهَ That Allah يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Allah knows what is in your souls. فَحْذَرُوهُ Sophia Allah. 
That is a warning. Ikhwan, if you, if you paid attention, all what we discussed today about was divorce. And most of these verses, Allah ends them with warnings. Fear Allah. Know that Allah knows everything. Fear Allah. Knows that, uh, know that Allah sees you. Fear Allah. These are the boundaries of Allah. Don't pass them. All of these verses ends with, end with warnings. To show that marriage in Islam is something very, very sacred, very, very important. It's not a joke. It's not something to take lightly. Allah says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Know that Allah knows what is in your souls. فَحْذَرُوهُ So you should fear Allah. Be, 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 be aware of Him. وَعْلَمُوا And you should know أَنَّ اللَّهَ That Allah غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ Allah is the oft forgiving. Uh, the one who is Al-Halim, the most forbearant one. So this is about the Ta'rid. Uh, this is about the Ta'rid. You see the system in Islam? There is a system, complete system. Next verse Allah says, La junaha alaykum, there's no problem on you. In tallaqtumun nisa'a, if you divorce women, ma lam tamassuhunna, women who you got married to, but you never had intercourse with them. Ma lam tamassuhunna, you never had intercourse with them. أو تفرض لهن فريضة or women who you married and you did not agree to a specified dowry specified mahar meaning there's no problem if you get divorced after that ومتعوهن على الموسع قدره وعلى المقتر قدره متاعا بالمعروف حقا على المحسنين Allah says for the one of you who's rich for the one of you who is rich, who has wealth, then give them wealth. Even you when you divorce, give them something according to what you can. And the one who is not so rich, also give what you can when you divorce in this situation. According to what you can. Allah says, Haqqan, this is a right. Al muhsinin to those people who are righteous. If you are righteous, you will do that. Don't say, oh no, I didn't touch, I didn't do anything, so that's it, no. We didn't specify dowry, no. You have to give something according to your ability. You have to give something according to your ability. وَمَتِّعُوهُنَّ عَلَى الْمُوسِعِ قَدَرُهُ وَعَلَى الْمُقْتِرِ قَدَرُهُ مَتَاعًا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ حَقًّا عَلَى الْمُحْسِنِينَ حَقًّا عَلَى الْمُحْسِنِينَ As Allah also said, so this woman whom you got married to but you never had intercourse with, Allah says you have to give her something when you divorce according to your ability. Does she have to stay for the idda though? Does she have to stay for the idda? No, Allah says that in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, or you who believe, إِذَا نَكَحْتُمُ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ When you get married to the believing women, ثُمَّ تَلَّقْتُمُهُنَّ And then you give them talaq, مِنْ قَبْلِ أَن تَمَسُّهُنَّ Before you actually had intercourse with them, فَمَا لَكُمْ عَلَيْهِنَّ مُنْ عِدَّةٍ تَعْتَدُّونَهَا فَمَتِّعُهُنَّ وَصَرِّحُهُنَّ سَرَاحًا جَمِيلًا There's no idda for them. There's no idda for them. You just got married, you did the nikah, you know, and you never met, you didn't do anything, khalas. You say, no, we should divorce, I don't think this is going to work, khalas. But you have to give her something. You have to give her something. And if you divorce them, مِنْ قَبْلِ أَن تَمَسُّهُنَّ Before you touch them, before you had intercourse with them, وَقَدْ فَرَبْتُمْ لَهُنَّ فَرِيدًا But you had agreed on a specified dowry. The previous verse, you divorced and you didn't have a specified dowry. Now you divorced and you had specified a dowry. 
فَنِسْفُ مَا فَرَضْتُمْ You have to give half. You have to give half. إِلَّا أَكْسَبْتْ أَنْ يَعْفُونَ If she forgives you. She says, I don't want anything. أَوْ يَعْفُوَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ عُقْدَةُ النِّكَاحِ Or the husband forgives the other half and says, I'll give you full. You understand? You divorced a woman before you had intercourse with her. But you had agreed on a dowry, $2,000. You have to give her half, a thousand. Unless she forgives. She says, I don't want your $1,000, alhamdulillah. Or on your side, you do the good. You say, you know what? I will forgive the other half, I'll give you full, $2,000. Allah says, Wa anta'fu aqrabu li taqwa. And that you forgive that is closer to taqwa, fear of Allah. For who? For him or for her? For him. That you forgive and say, you know what? I'll give her the full amount. That is better to taqwa. وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Allah says, don't forget to do good between yourselves. Don't forget to do good between yourselves. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Surely Allah, whatever you do, He sees it. I'm saying again, Ikhwan, look how all these verses, they end like this. Allah says, everything you do, Allah, He sees. وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Allah says, subhanallah. Do not forget to do good between yourselves. And this portion of the ayah, even though it's talking about the two spouses when they divorce before the, before the, the intercourse, this is for everybody, khwani. This is a principle of life. Don't forget the fadl, the good between yourselves. And first and foremost, foremost, who to who? Your parents. Don't forget the good they have done for you. Today you become who you are. You are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old maybe. Don't forget the good they did for you. Even if it's minimal. That should say what? That should say you do good to them. Your wives, don't forget the good between yourselves. Allah tells us, don't be people who only see what is bad. Some of us, sadly, were like that. We only see what is bad. We don't see the good people do for us. That is a very bad quality, a very bad characteristic to have as a Muslim. Especially with your parents, even if they do wrong for you, it is haram for you to do wrong for them. It is haram for you even to say often just a small word. It is haram for you to speak back to them. It is haram for you even to think of raising your hand against your father or your mother. Thinking of it. And if you do, then you will be cast in this world and the hereafter. One of the ways to destroy yourself, if you want to destroy yourself, is be bad to your parents. Watch how Allah pays you in this world before the hereafter. Watch. The Prophet said, two sins, Allah does not delay their punishment. He brings it in the world before the hereafter. Al-Baghi, transgression against people. wal and being bad to your parents. And your relatives. Those two sins, Allah, He punishes you here in this world before the hereafter. You'll always see yourself suffering. Always. So likewise, this woman, you get married to her. That is a point I had to make. You get married to her. You didn't do anything, but you had specified a mahar, a dowry. Then you decided, we're going to divorce. Allah says, you have to give half. You have to give half. And if you forgive, that is good. To finish off today, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, now the context of divorce has ended. Because this is important, I'm just going to mention this right now. Hafidhu ala salawati wa salati al wusta wa qumu lillahi qanitin. We'll discuss this in detail tomorrow. But Allah says, preserve your prayers. Be constant with your prayers. And especially as salat al-wusta, the middle prayer. 
in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as-salatul wusfa here, al-asr. Asr prayer is very, very important. Waqumu lillahi qanitin, and when you stand to Allah to pray, when you stand for Allah to pray, stand with a sense of fear and humbleness and submission. We'll continue from there tomorrow, inshallah. Do you have any questions today for with the about divorce? Yes. If someone got really angry and he doesn't know what he's saying, whatever divorce he utters is not counted. But these issues, let me say this, these issues, issues of divorce, usually you take them back for specific, I'm talking about specific cases. Here we're talking generally. For specific cases, you have to go to someone and speak to specifically. Someone who can solve that matter specifically. But the general rule is that if someone, when he becomes angry, he reaches that state where he doesn't know what he's saying. If he reads like that, then that divorce does not count. It does not count. Now, Mentioning ayahs jokingly. All I, uh, uh, some of the scholars they wrote in that and they said this is also part of making fun of Allah's verses. You know, example, you say to someone, um, you give someone a book and you say, Khudil Kitab Abiquwa, mentioning the verse, intending the verse. That is not allowed. You don't use the verses of Allah where they're not applicable. You cannot say it's kufr, but it's not right to do. It's not right to do. Now, we were supposed to give a small nasiha or directions for those who are doing itikaf, but mashallah, most of them are sleeping already. So I guess this will be postponed again. A pregnant woman fasting, it depends. If the doctors say it is easy for her, there's no complications, it's okay, she can fast. If she feels herself she is okay to fast, she can take it, she can fast. But mostly the doctors will say to her, no, you have to eat, because she's not eating for herself. She's eating for the, for the feet, for the baby. So especially in the later stages of the pregnancy, so she has to eat. She has to eat. And if she eats because of the pregnancy, meaning she doesn't fast, then after Ramadan, all she has to do is what? To feed one poor person for every day. To feed one poor person for every day. That's what she does. Now, anybody else with a question? Yes, Akhi. Do you pray with her while you're traveling? For the traveler, the Prophet وسلم, like the brother also said, you are allowed to shorten the, f the, the four raka'ah prayers. 
So Dhuhr, you can pray too. Asr, you can pray too. And Isha, you can pray too. And also from his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that the musafir, he does not pray any of the nafila prayers, any of the voluntary prayers. The musafir, the musafir does not pray any of the voluntary prayers, except two. Number one is the two rak'ahs before fajr. The two rak'ahs before fajr. And number two is witr. These two, the Prophet wasallam will never leave them. Will never leave them. And some of the scholars, they also said salatul duha. You can pray duha if you're a traveler. Because the Prophet wasallam he prayed that in Mecca. And he was a traveler. No. So you can pray witr. You pray witr if you're a traveler. Yes. Yes, a woman who's pregnant and a woman who's breastfeeding. If they have to eat because of the baby, then they have to eat. It's a must. They don't fast. And what they do, they don't have to fast those days. They just feed for every day they missed one poor person, one complete meal. When you're fasting, you stop. It's better you stop a minute before the time you see on your, on your calendar. Like you said, because you cannot hear the adhan. So if you stop two, three minutes before that, alhamdulillah. If you didn't realize you went 10 seconds over, <laughs> inshallah, it's not a problem, 10 seconds. As long as you didn't realize, like you said, if you didn't realize, not intentionally. If Jum'a and Eid fall on the same day, which is the higher probability for this Eid, insha'Allah. If you pray Eid, if you pray Eid, Salatul Eid, and then there's the khutbah, right? Or is there a khutbah or Eid? Which is, does the Salah come first or the khutbah comes first for Eid? Salah comes first. If you pray that, then you don't have to come for Jum'a prayer. But you still have to pray Dhuhr. You can just pray Dhuhr at home. That is special ruling for if Eid falls on uh, uh, on Friday. And that is only if you actually pray the Eid. But if you missed Salatul Eid, then you have to pray Jum'ah. You have to go to the masjid to pray Jum'ah with the khutbah. You understand? No. If you know the time has come for iftar, break the, break the fast. Don't wait for the adhan. If you are sure the sun has set, it is maghrib. Go ahead and eat. Don't wait for the adhan. Huh? Are you using the same timing as the mu'adhin? Your timing is the same. And you're saying, but he says, no, let's give it three more minutes. No, you go ahead and eat. You understand? Those people want to be overly cautious. <laughs> it's different timing. How can it be different? There's only one sunset. No, Maghrib is one. There's no difference in Maghrib. There's no difference in Maghrib, Akhi. This is the first time in my life I hear there's a difference in Maghrib. Sunset is one, just like sunrise is one. There's no difference in that. I 
I have never seen that in my life, and that's what I'm telling you. I don't know that. What I know, Maghrib is one. If you're not sure of the timing here in the masjid, search for, um, what is this called? Environment Canada. Is it Environment Canada? They post the times for sunrise and sunset every day. That is almost precise. Every day of the year you can find that. And if you look at it, it matches the time of Maghrib we have. So this is the first time in my life I hear there's a difference in the time of Maghrib. If you say Maghrib Salah, yes, I understand. Some people want to pray early. Some of us, we delay Maghrib. But the time Maghrib comes in, how can there be a difference? There's only one sunset for one city. I understand that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't depend on the app. Sunset is one. There's only one sunset. Don't depend on the app. You understand? That is why I asked you. Is he using the same timing as you? If he's using the same app and he says, no, I'll add three minutes. You eat. Let him eat after three minutes. I myself, I'll tell you this. For sunrise and sunset, I look at the, is it Environment Canada or what? It's supposed to be Environment Canada. And there's a website called Time and Date, whatever. It can give you for every place of the world. Exact, precise. These things are known. Maghrib and sunrise. There should be no, there is sunrise and sunset. There's no difference in that. What about the Mu'addin? He's supposed to break his fast and then make the Adhan. But break his fast one day, Tian. He doesn't sit and eat and then make the Adhan for people. No. I'll tell you something funny. And I've never seen this anywhere in the world except in Egypt where I was at. See, this is the masjid. See, this is the masjid. You see that building there, the church? That's where I live. That's where I live, literally. Maybe that is even far. That's how close I was to the masjid. But I was at the sixth floor. Of course, there's no elevators. Wallahi. When he calls Adhan, when he calls Adhan, by the time I break my fast and I get down, I miss one raka or two rakas. That is how quick they are. Adhan, one, two, three deaths, iqama right away. Because I'm saying this because some brothers here, we give them almost 15 minutes, say, oh, Sheikh, you need to increase the time. People are having iftar. This is breaking the fast. You're not supposed to be eating now. Break the fast and come pray. Then you go eat. I'm telling you, the t number of times I actually caught the takbiratul ihram was when I was in the masjid. If you're not in the masjid, the first raka, forget it. Forget about it, like the brother always says. Forget about it, man. Trust me. That is how fast this... I've never seen this anywhere else in the world. And I used to find it strange. Really strange, because it used to be a big burden for me. You know, you want to break the fast, you make wudu, you walk to the masjid. No, no, no. There's nothing like that. And there's no elevators, like I said. And up, I'm up on the sixth floor. The point being... Don't wait for the Mu'addin. You know, time has come. Time has come. Some countries, especially it's most of the Muslim countries, they even delay five minutes, like you said, three, five minutes. Or we just want to make sure. No. It's Maghrib, it's Maghrib. Remember I mentioned this every time before Ramadan? When Ramadan comes, then we are doubt of Maghrib. Every other day, Sheikh, we got to pray. You know, we got to pray. We got to make Maghrib the shortest salah. Any more questions? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you steadfast. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya musarrif al-qulub sarrif qalbi ala ta'atik. Allahumma rabbi habbibi layya al-iman wa zayyinuhu fi qalbi. All those, you have the dua book, obviously. There's a chapter on duas for steadfastness and iman. Those are the duas you make. Yes, akhi.
the verse, the verse, it doesn't speak about that. The verse, it speaks about those who hide the truth, the verses of Allah. That is a different situation. You know, someone who stole money from a company, do you go report them? But that will cause bigger problems for everyone, or you don't? Allah, it's up to you. If you feel it's, it's, it's more productive for you to speak to him individually, just speak to him and advise him. Tell him this is wrong. You know, you cannot do this. You have to return this money. And that is better instead of exposing him. But if you feel there's no way to do that or he refuses, then and you feel it's your duty to go report him, then go report him. Hiding that, you don't hide the truth in terms of advising someone. The Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever of you sees what is evil, you have to advise. You have to advise him. That's why I said you go advise him. You go advise him. Him first. Like you just said, you don't want to create bigger problems. So you go speak to him. Akhi, what you did is wrong. You have to return this wealth to that person. Otherwise, I will tell him because it's his right. If he does, alhamdulillah, case closed. You don't have to tell anyone. If he doesn't, and you feel it's a significant amount, then you go tell the other person. This is the benefit. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Unsur You should help your brother where he's the oppressor or the oppressed. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we can help the oppressed. How do we help the oppressor? He said, hold his hand so he doesn't oppress people. That is what you're doing. And he did not just oppress, he took someone's right. Taking someone's right is different from just oppressing someone by words. He said something bad about someone. He said, okay, don't do that. He said, okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay. But he took someone's property. He has to return it. Why do you speak about it? If you did that, do you love for someone to speak about you? Answer my question. If you are the one who may happen to steal, would you love for the person to actually publicize that you did that? The answer is no. Then also deal with people the way you like to be dealt with. Approach him individually. Just between you and him. And say, Akhi, this and that and that and that, you have to give me back my money. He agrees, Alhamdulillah, case closed. Nobody has to know. If he disagrees and you still want your money, then if you have to go report him, go report him because it's your right. It's your right. You understand? No. You had a question over there? Okay. So we continue tomorrow, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Shalom la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka tu